In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to control a step motor using a TB6600 stepper driver and an Arduino. It doesn't matter which Arduino board you're using, they will all have the same output pins which are used in this example. The first step is to set the parameters for the stepper motor. On the face plate of the stepper driver, you can see two tables. The upper table is to select the number of steps per evolution, and the lower table is to set the output current. To select a parameter, we use the switches on the top of the stepper driver, which correlate with the tables. In this example, we're going to set the steps per evolution to 6400. To select this parameter, we need switches 1, 2 and 3 to be set to the off position. Now we need to set the current. I'm going to be using a NEMA 11 stepper motor, which requires an input of 0.67 amps. This is in the range of 0.5 to 0.7 amps as shown on the bottom table so we need to set the switches 4, 5 and 6 to the on position. The next step is to wire the stepper motor into the stepper driver. You will see that there are input terminals labelled B-, B+, A- and A+, on the side of the driver. These are the pins you connect the stepper motor to. Most manufacturers supply a data sheet showing which cable is which. For example, if we go to the Steppers Online website and go onto any stepper motor's product page, we will see which cable goes to each input. In this example, the motor connections used are shown in the diagram. Once the motor is wired in, then we can connect the Arduino. The top six terminals are the ones used for the Arduino. The top two are the enable inputs, which can be used to turn off the current supply to the stepper motor. The next two are the direction inputs, which is used to set the stepper motor to spin clockwise or anti-clockwise. The final two are the pulse inputs, which are used to tell the stepper driver to turn the stepper motor. We're only going to be using one of the direction inputs and one of the pulse inputs. The other inputs we connect to the ground pin, as shown in the diagram. To do this, I would recommend pulling up the terminal and connecting each input together using jump cables. This makes the wiring a little bit easier. We then connect one of the direction inputs and one of the pulse inputs to the Arduino's digital pins. In this example, I'm using pins 2 and 3, as shown in the diagram. It doesn't matter which Arduino board you're using because they all use digital input pins and have a ground pin connected to them. The last part is to wire in the supply voltage, connect to the final two inputs, ground going to the GND pin and the input voltage going to the VCC pin. The stepper driver takes a DC input and will allow from 9 volts up to 42 volts. I'm going to be connecting to a 24 volt power supply. Now everything is wired in, we can open the Arduino IDE. If you don't have this installed, then I've added a link to the description to download. First, we define the pins we've used for each of the stepper driver inputs. In this case, we have pin 2 connected to the direction input, and pin 3 connected to the step input. I'm also going to define the number of steps per evolution, because this makes the code easier to adapt later on. So if you do use a different steps per evolution, you can just change this top value, rather than changing the value through your code. In the void setup section, we set the pins used for the stepper driver as outputs using the following syntax. Now that's set up, we can write the code to control the stepper motor. To make the stepper motor move, we need to pass in a step signal. Initially, we create a for loop so we can pass in multiple step signals. We're going to loop through the signal the same amount of times as the steps required to make one full rotation. So we can use our steps per revolution as defined at the top of the code as our upper limits of the for loop. Inside the for loop, we first set the direction of the motor, which is going to be set to high. We then set the step pin to high, which will send one pulse signal into the stepper driver. We then leave a delay time and set the step pin to low. Then we wait the same amount of time. These last four lines have created a step signal. By sending this multiple times by using a for loop, we can turn the stepper motor. If we compile and send this code to the Arduino, this is the result. 
Now if we decrease the delay time, we can increase the frequency of the step signal, which will make the step motor turn faster, which we can see here when we compile and send the code to the Arduino. Inside the void loop section, the code runs over and over again, so we're going to add an infinite while statement at the bottom of the code. This will stop the code looping after the for loop has been executed. So now if we run the code, the step motor will only make one full rotation. If we change the parameters inside the for loop, we can now make the motor turn however many times we would like. In this example, I'll set to five rotations. We can also change the polarity by setting the direction to low. This will turn the step motor the opposite way. This is now the end of my tutorial to control a step motor using a TB6600 stepper driver. If you have any questions, then please leave a comment below.